our name on it, hallelujah. Because we woke up this morning, you got a blessing with your name on it, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many know that you're blessed? They haven't been blessed, hallelujah. Oh, yes. You got your name on it right now today. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. This is another test. It won't last always. So get ready. Get ready.
But I don't know about you. I just feel like you bleeding some blood up in this house. I got joy up in my soul. You got joy up in your soul. Come on now. Hallelujah. I got joy in my soul. Come on, Pastor.
the Lord, church. <laughs> praise the Lord, church. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. I didn't know what. <laughs> uh, on behalf of our pastor, Pastor uh, Lou J. Robinson, and uh, the ministerial staff, and our, of course, our business pastor pastor Perdita uh, we're so happy that uh, you made this a part of your worship service today today is our uh, kickoff service for uh, our women's day which is actually November the 12th uh, 2023 and we're so happy praise the Lord we are so happy that because we are mighty women of valor praise the Lord we are mighty women of valor because we know how to praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the loop and heart. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Sister. Good morning, church family. Good morning. I don't think we told the Lord enough that we love him and we praise him and we, we're thankful for all he's done. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. And this is war. And we are the children of the Most High. And we should be worshiping him and praising him. Everybody on your feet and give the Lord some love today. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If there wasn't for the Lord, where would we be? Mm. Mm -mm. This is our kickoff service. And we have a wonderful preacher here today to bring us a word. And we're going to do the opening hymn which is all hail the power of Jesus name number five it's printed in your bulletin let's sing it with some gusto and let him know he's the king of the most high the Lord of Lord I'm gonna make a joyful noise person, so I'm gonna sing it with all I got. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, crown him. We one day going to be at his feet to worship him. Can you imagine that? Mm, I can't wait. Mm, glory, glory. Now we will have the call to worship our sister Catherine Boyd Christian. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Okay, I'll be doing the call of worship, as Sister Dana already mentioned. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet has been standing within our gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in that house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing praises. Jesus loves all of us, and children and parents, seniors, youths, and little children. We love you, Jesus. Amen. I just want to say that um, we ought to meditate on the call of worship. It's, most of it is contained from the book of Psalms. And we know David praised the Lord and was a man after God's own heart. So we don't want to just recite these words. We want to feel them. We want to let God know that we are glad to be in the house of the Lord. Okay? All right. So we're going to have our affirmation of faith by Sister Arianne Cosley. Good morning, church. Good morning. And to all the beautiful ladies, Queen Chapel. Amen. This is Women's Day. <laughs> the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the church universal, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We will now have our morning prayer by Ellen Graham. Amen. Boy, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, what is such a blessing today? Um, I have to start to say, God, um, just thank you, God, for the different things that I've been through this week. The devil's been busy on my family, but I know that there is a God, and he has it all in control. Let us get in the attitude of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with open hearts, dear Lord, asking you for your protection, your grace, and your mercy. And we just thank you for all the things which you have done. 
We can never say thank you enough for the many things that you brought upon us, dear Lord, for the great things that you have in store, in store for us ahead. Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful women's kickoff service, this women's season, dear Lord. And even as it's being women's season, we cannot do it without the men, dear Lord, the leaders, dear Lord. Um, continue to guide them as well as they guide and lead us, dear Lord. We want to go by the hospitals. We want to go by the nursing homes. We want to go by the homes. We want to go by our homes. We want to go by the streets, dear Lord. Just the, the many stores and the homeless, the mental health, those who are crying at home, the children who need their parents, the parents who need the children, the grandmothers, the stepmothers, the aunts, the sisters, the cousins, dear Lord. Just each and every one, dear Lord. Lay your hands upon them. Give them your grace. Show them your love. Open their hearts, dear Lord, for your word of truth, dear Lord. Never forgetting who you are, dear Lord. We thank you. We cannot say thank you enough, God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Amen. Amen. selection from the Women's Day Choir.
now we have another selection from our Women's Day Choir. Oh 
Imagine all the things God has done for you. You can't help but praise Him. And because of who He is and who whose we are, <laughs> we can't help but worship Him. God is awesome. He's a mighty God. He is a deliverer. Hallelujah. He provides us with everything that we need. And all he asks is for us to acknowledge him in all our ways and lean not on our own understanding, but trust in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to have some announcements, a recognition of visitors by our sister Deanna Ali. Bless Welcome to Quinn Chapel this morning, church. Let's get excited, amen. Yes. I will be uplifting the announcements and recognizing any first time visitors because today is our women's kickoff season uh, service, amen. We can give a hand clap for that. And I'm gonna start out with on page six. You can follow along with me. Um, I'm going to start out with the, highlighting the weekly activities here at Quinn Chapel. And so it begins. On Sundays, we have the adult church school class. And we would be delighted for you to join us for church school. The time is 9 to 10 a.m. And if you would like to join, you can call 667-770-1445. And then the access code 636525 pound sign. And on every Wednesday, we have Bible study. And so we ask that you please join us on Wednesdays as we are studying the book of Leviticus. And the times are 11.30 a.m. or 7.30 p.m. Or you can join for both. And the call to join, you can call 425. 436-6329 and the access code is 816-286 pound sign. And on Saturday mornings, we have prayer time. So please join us on each Saturday morning at 10 a.m. as we go and have corporate prayer and praise unto the Lord. So to join, guess what? You can enter in that same number you would for Bible study and that same access code as well. And we ask that you please join us throughout the week during our activities so that way you can stay plugged into Christ all week. Amen. And we are a church that loves to pray. And we ask that you please pray and support all those who have recently lost loved ones. And we ask you to pray for Pastor Robinson and family in the transition of his brother-in-law, Brother Leon Hill, Sister Ellen Brown and the Diggs family in the transition of Aunt Jane Jones and their cousin, John Giles Jr., Brother Earl and Sister Olivia Robbins in the transition of Brother Robbins' brother, Sisters Deborah Yuri and Victoria Coswell and families for their sister and dear aunt, sister Denise Johnson and cousin Arlen Cotta. We want to continue to praise God for the progress of sister Kendra Pearson at Frederick Health Rehabilitation Center. And we want to please continue to lift up her mother, sister Rose and her family. We want to pray for sister Gloria Lyles and family, 
Pray for Sister Vonda Lucas and Sister Janet Davis and family. For Sister Jackie Cheney and family. For Brother Johnny Disney. Sister Mary Goins as she continues to recover in the Meritus Medical Center in Hagerstown, Maryland. Amen. And pray for the family of the late Mrs. Hazel Yvonne Thompson. And we want to ask that you pray for all of us because we give God the glory and the praise and the honor for all the great things that he is doing and will continue to do. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to faint. Luke 8, 1. And remember that God is up to something. There is a reason why you went through all of what you went through. You want to trust the process? He's got you. And that's a reminder from our dear old pastor, Luke J. Ross. Yes, sir. Give credit where it's due. Amen. 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 All righty, if you would turn with me to the back of your flyer, your bulletin, on page eight, we are mighty women of valor this season, and we are studying Judges 4, 1 through 16, and we are celebrating our Women's Day season, amen. So today is October the 15th. And that means it's our kickoff service, amen? amen? And we have the Reverend Perdita L. Johnson Amber Comby, who is sitting right behind me from Reed Temple AME Church, who is going to bring the word. Very excited about that, amen? And on November the 12th, we have our Women's Day service, and that is going to be with Reverend Robin E. Henry from St. Mark AME Church, amen? amen. Our colors are white or off-white with gold accessories, but baby, if you don't got that, just wear what's in your closet and come to church and praise the Lord, okay? And our financial goal is $15,000. Would the ushers please prepare the, to get the envelopes? And we also have pledge sheets for anyone that would like to have one. If you don't have one, would you please raise your hand at this time and the ushers will get you one. Amen. So while I'm continuing announcements or you know, right, we're getting praise, getting faithful, one or two or three, as our pastor has said, but please make your um, pledge and please plan to give as you can, amen, to help us reach that goal of $15,000 because you know what? The Lord will see us through, amen. amen. And on October the 28th, 2023, we are having our rejoicing and prayer and praise breakfast, amen. amen. And today is the last Sunday that you could get tickets. The tickets are $20. And would all those who still have tickets, would you please raise your hand so that way we could come and see you after the service that Sister Victoria Coswell still has some tickets left. So please go and see her if you haven't purchased your ticket, amen. We just wanna be uh, ready and able for when we hit the October the 28th, we will rejoice and praise and prayer, amen, and eat some good food too, Holly. And we just want to acknowledge our Women's Day Chairperson, Reverend Shirley D. Parker, who has done an excellent job thus far. And we are very, very, very excited about this season. So as you see, I'm excited, get excited, stay excited because we have about a good month of excitement of what the Lord is gonna do with the women of Quinn Chapel AME Episcopal Church, amen? amen? Amen. So we have a first time visitor, and if you would please stand um, as I call your name, and I might need some help, because I think it's Nomi. Please stand, it's Nomi Van Der Brock, and um, you are a first time visitor, and we would like to welcome you and greet you in the love and joy of Jesus Christ. Would you like to say anything to the congregation? Um, I've just been looking for a church home for a while, so it's my first time and I'm really enjoying it. 
Amen. Well, we would love to have you, and please consider us as you find your church home. We have plenty of room for you right here. Amen. 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 Thank you. Oh, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Nomi's mother. She was oh. there. And I'm just visiting her. We, we used to, she used to worship with us at DuPage A&E in Illinois. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. We welcome you as well to the service, and I hope you are enjoying the service, and we thank you for visiting with us this morning. And you picked the right day because it's our women's kickoff service. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. My God, this, this is a ready today. And um, Sister Erin is so excited she doesn't know it is in Women's Day. <laughs> Just gonna kick us brothers to the curb, and uh, we're gonna see her after the church. Brothers, we're gonna have a little talk with her. She's excited. <laughs> you heard what he said, didn't you, brothers? We better leave her alone. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! What what a what a wonderful time we're having in, in the Lord today. Amen. Thank God, thank God, thank God for the singing, the worship, the praise, etc., and the opportunity. Amen. Amen. Um, we're we're in a crisis going on in our world right now. It's a major crisis, and um, I I'm, I would like to invite you to a prayer meeting tomorrow. Um, I want you to come and pray for Israel. I want you to come and pray for Israel tomorrow. Um, um, what's happening in the world right now, we're winding, it seems like we're winding down real fast to the second coming of Jesus Christ, and it's looking for the rapture of the church. And um, so I think, I think we need to pray. This thing that was going on right now could ish usher into us into World War III. Uh, it's a lot going on there, and um, Israel, remember that uh, they went through the Holocaust. Remember that? And one thing they said, never again. And so they made up their mind then. They're not going to be burnt in those gas chambers anymore. They're not going through that anymore. And so they're determined. And uh, in 1967, uh, the enemy came upon them all at once and almost devastated them. They got up off their, li off their feet, got up to their feet, and they took the land all the way back to Egypt, down to Gaza. All of that happened. And what I think is happening now is we are getting ready for God and setting up for the end time. You and I want to be on the right side. Amen. I'm here to tell you. We want to be on the right side. Now, Reverend, no matter what you think about Israel, it's really not as much as what you think about them as as much as what God thinks about them. And he has throughout the Bible, even though they've been out of order in many places, he always came back and restored them. And in Christ Jesus, amen, in the church, us now, when we get out of line, all we have to do is go back to God and say, Lord, I blew this thing. Because he has not only made a covenant with them, he's made a covenant with the church. And the church needs to be with Israel, not for the, uh, Israel's sake, but for our own sake. Amen. Because God loves the Israel people, Jewish people. Listen, we read this sometime in the... Uh, and, and well, we just about read it all the time in the, um, listen to this. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, Psalm 122, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within in, in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem belongs to God. It is the Amen. city of God. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Where the tribes go up and the tribes of the Lord, the tribes of the Lord to the testimony of Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. 
for, th for thrones are set there for judgment. The thrones of the house of David. Listen to this verse. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you, Jerusalem. The Jewish people. Peace be within your walls. Prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Because God's temple was in Jerusalem, we ought to seek the good of the house of the Lord. But guess what? They're going to rebuild that temple. Yeah. And, and then the Antichrist is going to be sitting up in the temple proclaiming that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Then the real king is going to come. And it's going to be the end of that. Amen and amen. So why don't, what's a good time for you tomorrow? Okay, you pray all day, but you come here at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Some people say all day, yeah, and they won't come at all. <coughs> 6 o'clock, 6 to 7, we're going to ask God to, to intervene in this situation. Those people are outnumbered. They got enemies all around them. And you know why they're the enemies of those people, of the Jewish people? Because God has set the Jewish people aside for himself. And people can't get over it. It don't matter if I like them or not. God loves them. It would be better for me if I love them because I love the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for your grace and your mercy. We pray, God, that you be upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that Israel, your people, will be able to overcome the great odds that have come against them. And Lord, a lot of the stuff that's happening, we don't understand it fully. But God, you said you were in the mix. And Lord, they took the babies and chopped their heads off. They took the women and raped them. They took the old people and shot them. They hauled off people for sexual slaves to other places. And some people are still saying, this is normal behavior. <clears throat> we pray, Lord God, even for those who are committing the crimes, while we pray for them. Amen. It is your desire yes. that all people come to know the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through him. So Lord, today we remember your people I re remember your people because we are your people. And we ask, Lord, you bless Israel because you have set them as a witness to the whole nation or the whole world and the whole continent. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. People of God say, Amen. amen. We will now have an offertory prayer by Sister Evelyn Robinson. Amen. It's time for giving, y'all. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Church, it's time to give our gifts and our offerings. Amen. And we give praise to the Lord for that. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with our, our offering, our gifts, and our, our tithe, and we are excited, and we are freely giving, and we are not giving by compulsion, but we are giving because we love you and because you have said to give. And so we ask that you would use our offering for the growth and uplifting of your kingdom, and we will forever give you the honor and glory. We realize that 
We only give a little bit of what we have, and all that we have belongs to you. Yes. Everything that we have belongs yes. to you. Yes. So we thank you and we praise you in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We're gonna have another selection from the Women's State Choir. And they awesome, y'all.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise, oh God. But you are worthy, oh God. We love you, Lord. We extol you. Adore you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, choir. Mm. Now we're going to have our sister, our Reverend Shirley Parker, come and pray for the people of the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sister Dana. It's my pleasure and my privilege to pray for the people of the whole world. Uh, the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'm before you this morning um, on behalf of my pastor, Pastor Robinson, to mention to you about the uh, Global Prayer Outreach Ministry here at Quinn Chapel. Uh, in order to be, well, you don't have to purchase a globe to be a part of the prayer ministry. You don't have to purchase a globe to pray. But what we're asking you to do is purchase a globe and put it somewhere where it would remind us to pray uh, for the other nations. And I believe lifting up um, the prayer for Israel and all the other different countries and the continents, that it could have been worse. So uh, I don't know how it could have been worse, but it could have been worse. So we are uh, to continue to lift them up. And also, I would left, left, like to lift up a young woman this morning. And our theme for our Women's Day season is Mighty Women of Valor. And when I uh, got this information about her, I said this is def definitely a mighty woman of valor. A mighty woman of valor knows how to pray. A mighty woman of valor knows how to be submissive. A mighty woman of valor knows how to fight. A mighty woman of valor knows how to take care of her husband, her children, and her household. So I just want to thank you for this mighty Women's Day Choir. They are definitely a mighty woman of valor and all of, all of you. And I would like to thank the men also who uh, I would like to lift them up also because they are very encouraging and they are the ones who help us stay mighty women of valor. So according to the Alliance Defending Freedom, a woman was arrested for praying for the unborn near the BPAS Robert Clinic in Kings Norton, Birmingham. Um, in the area of the uh, United Kingdom called Censorship Zone. When a police officer approached her after an onlooker complained she might be praying outside this abortion clinic, um, and of course they say it's illegal for, for people to engage in any graphic, verbal, or written, written means by praying or counseling. So the officer asked her, was she praying? She said, I might be praying in my head. And she was arrested for praying in her head. And this was the second time she was arrested. A mighty woman of valor by the name of Isabel Vaughn Spurs is definitely a woman of valor. And uh, she, what she does, she goes back. She get arrested, but she goes back and pray for the unborn. And I was looking at some of the video on her and she was saying that uh, there was a young lady who came up to that clinic and when that lady saw her talking, you know, praying, she had a conversation with her and she changed her mind. God is a God that says, choose life that you and your seed may live. So we're going to lift up the women and also the men also. You know, we love our men too, so amen. 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 Father, we come to you in Jesus' holy, precious, and righteous name. Lord, we lift up the women of the world. Those women are being persecuted for just being a woman. So God, we lift them up to you, God, and the people that are persecuting them. Even if they cry to you and give 
they like to you, God, they can have eternal life also. So we pray, God, that you encourage women and keep encourage us to do a thing for the Lord because so you call men, you also call women to carry out your plan. And Lord, we just thank and praise you and magnify your name. We pray for those women who don't know you in the pardon of their sins that they may cry out and say, what must I do to be saved? So, Lord, now we lift women up to you this morning, God. We are mighty women of valor, also knows how to pray. We know how to praise the Lord. We know how to lift you up, God. And we just thank and praise you. So, Lord, we thank you for the men that you put in our life, God, to help us be the women you have called us to be. We lift them up, God, that you would have the protection around them. Protect them from the wives of the devil and blind the enemy from them, God. And they may be strong, also mighty men of valor. In Jesus' name I pray and do give thanks. Amen and amen. 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 Now we come to the favorite part of, of the service for me is the scripture, the written word. The bread of life. Victoria Carswell is going to bring a word for us. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just want to first, I, I hope you don't mind, um, thank everyone for your continued prayers for our family. Y'all know we lost our cousin Arlen in Florida when a person who was supposed to be his friend disrupted his life. And then shortly after that, before we could even get to into the realization that he was gone, we lost Aunt Denise. Um, and then the day after Aunt Denise's funeral, we found out that our great aunt Miriam, who is grandma's last living sibling, um, passed in her sleep. And so we felt like our family was being tested. But God is good. God is good. Because even in the midst of that, you realize that God has blessed you with women who will uplift you and encourage you. Listening to all of my aunts and my cousins that were in the midst, young children, when she was a young mother, and in sharing how she mothered them, yeah. even though they had their mothers. Yeah. But then when their mothers passed, mm -hmm. how she continued to love on them. Mm -hmm. We cannot take each other for granted. Yeah. We cannot take our family for granted. Yeah. And we need to keep continuing to stay strong and encourage people. Yeah. Just because a person passes away doesn't mean that you're supposed to fall apart. That's the time when you as an individual or as a family or as a community should come together and encourage each other. And I thank you all for continuing to pray for our family and to encourage us. We take it not lightly. And I just wanted to say, Nomi, welcome to the community of Frederick. And if you're looking for a church home, I have a ticket for you to come to our prayer breakfast. So please, please come. Um, can you give this to Nomi? And Nomi's mom, I, I know you're visiting, but if you're going to be here, let me know. I have an extra ticket for you, too. Amen. Okay. Amen. And I thank Brother Michael for um, paying for those extra tickets so that we could bless someone. Um, and if you know anybody, if Nomi's mom doesn't take that ticket, then I have another ticket. If you know someone that would like to be blessed to come to the prayer breakfast, let me know. Um, I was asked to read the scripture today, and it will be coming from Judges, book, um, the book of Judges 4, chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. And this is from the New King James Version. And um, it's about the prophetess Je uh, Deborah. <clears throat> and Ehud, when Ehud was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, 
who reigned in his all. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in, I'm gonna not say this right, I know it's not pronounced right, but I'm phonetic, so Horoshis Hagoyim, Hagoyim, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lippadoth, was judging Israel at the time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and, Naphtali, and said to him, has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy troops to Mount Tabor? Take with you 10,000 men of the sons of Naphtali and the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river of Kishon, and I will deliver him into your hand. And will I deliver him into your hand? And Barak said to her, if you, go, if you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in this journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah rose, arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Sebulon and Nephtali to Kadesh. He went up with 10,000 men under his command. And Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had separated themselves from the Kenites and pitched his tent near the Terebinth tree at Zenam, which is beside Kadesh. And they reported to Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinon, had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera gathered together all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the people who were with him from Horoseth, Horboyam, to the river Kishon. Then Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hand. Has not the Lord gone out before you? So Barak went, to, went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. And the Lord routed Sisera and his troop, chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. And Sisera alighted from his chariot and fled away on foot. But Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Herosheth Hagoyam and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. Amen. The reading and the hearing of the word for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vicki. Wow, Come on. <laughs> We will now have the introduction of our guest preacher, my yes. sister Evelyn Gw Gwendolyn Atkins. Yes. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. This has been an awesome, awesome service so far. And I know we're in for the best now. <laughs> Let me introduce you to, and you can follow along in your bulletin if you like. Ms. Johnson Abercrombie is an ordained itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, currently serving on the ministerial staff of Reed Temple AME Church, Glendale, Maryland, under the leadership of Pastor Mark E. Whitlock. Reverend Johnson Abercrombie has spoken and trained throughout the United States on numerous topics to include EEO laws, promoting civility, team building, conflict management, and generational impact in the workplace. Ms. Johnson Abercrombie has addressed professional and faith-based organizations as a keynote speaker, workshop facilitator, and motivational speaker. In her professional career, Perdita serves as a regional director for the Department of Veterans Affairs, Eastern Equal Employment Operations, and National Alternative Dispute Resolution Program. In addition to her regional director responsibilities, Ms. Johnson Abercrombie is a trained mediator. She has worked in the equal employment profession for over 38 years. As a federal employee, Perdita has held positions in the Department of Justice, Drug Enforcement Administration, and the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Quite an accomplishment. She is the recipient of the Attorney General's EEO Award, the highest award given in EEO in the Department of Justice, and the recipient of the Department of Veterans Affairs Diversity and Inclusion Award. Perdita also served our country for 14 years as a Polish interrogator in the U.S. Army Reserves. Wow. <laughs> Some woman. <laughs> Perdita holds a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's in divinity degree, and a master's in pastoral counseling. She is blessed to be married for 26 years to a wonderful man of God, and honored to be the mother of a 23-year-old graduate student. Her goal in life is to help others find their true potential and to continue building God's kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. I do know. I present to you Reverend Perdita Johnson Abercrombie. Praise the Lord. Woo, you all came to have church today up in here. <laughs> Congratulations to the women and your kickoff service. Oh my goodness, it has been a blessing just to sit and be still um, as, as we've come to this part, portion of the service. You are truly, truly, truly blessed to have such an engaged um, congregation and so many mighty women of valor that sits before me today. So good morning, good morning, and good afternoon. Um, I bring you greetings as was read from Reed Temple AME Church where Reverend Mark E. Whitlock is the pastor. And I just want to thank your pastor here, Reverend Ro Pastor Wa Robinson, for allowing me to stand here behind this holy desk just to spend just a few moments with the precious members of Quinn Chapel. To the Women's Day Committee, to the chairwoman, oh my goodness, we had such a good conversation yesterday. Reverend Shirley Parker, you all are blessed to have her amongst you. So let's just give her a hand. Praise. We was having church yesterday, weren't we? I said, I got to go because I got to write this sermon. So, but we was having a good time. And to the Women's Day Committee, I know you guys are working very hard. 
And there's still a lot to do since you're not released from this assignment till after November 12th. Um, but I am just excited that you have given me this opportunity to address you on the Wednesday kickoff. Kickoffs are very important in football because it begins, puts the ball in play. So I don't take this assignment lightly at all. And like the kicker, I got an assignment. I'm gonna do my best to put the team in its best position and then I'm gonna get off the field, <laughs> amen, so that the right players can come and take their positions. So I'm not gonna be up here long because the kicker usually not on the, lane, on, the, on the field that long. <laughs> The Women's Day Committee has selected as their scriptural text, as you asked, was read, and read very well. Because when I saw that scripture, I would say, Lord, please don't make me read all those names. <laughs> Divinity degree or not, those names are a challenge. Amen. So you did an excellent job. Amen. Excellent job. Amen. Amen. And this scripture is a very rich scripture, which I admit, I don't really deal with Deborah too much. But I had to spend a considerable amount of time exploring it and studying it. And so when you are given an assignment like this and you have to really kind of reach out to really dig into, it's always a blessing. And so since the scripture has already been read, I'm going to take the liberty of just kind of highlighting some of the text that, and verse, excuse me, that I am going to be focusing on because I'm not going to get to all the 16. Um, so let us begin. I'm going to start in Judges 4. But I'm going to be looking at starting at verse 4. And it says in the word, Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Libidoth, was leading Israel at that time. Five. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinon, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go, take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of, J of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops of Kishon River, and give him into your hands. And give him yeah. into yeah. your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I ain't going. <laughs> Certainly, I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of your course, of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. Then Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and the 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up to them. Now I'm switching over to 14. Then Deborah said to Barak, go. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down from my Tabor with 10,000 men following him. Now, I want to move a little bit earlier into and get to pull something up from the New Testament according to Matthew, the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st verse. And this scripture is about the women, the 10 virgins. And it says in 25, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. We don't have a backup. The wise ones, however, <laughs> took oil in their jars with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out. Here's the bridegroom, comes out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise one, give us some of that oil, our lamps are gone out. This is my own, putting my own emphasis on that. <laughs> no, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us. Instead, go out there to those who sell oil and buy some for yourself. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, because you know this thing is closed, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready with, them, with him into the wedding banquet and the doors were shut. Later the other ones came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, mm-mm, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because as the pastor has already said, you don't know the day or the hour. Amen. Today I find it critically significant that this theme was selected for Women's Day. As your pastor has already alluded to, 
These past two weeks have been amazingly difficult on the world front. I'm a federal employee, as read in my bio, and on September 30th, I waited breathlessly to figure out if Congress was going to allow me to come back to work on October 2nd. I did. I stayed up till midnight to see what they did. A few days later, the nation awakes to the news that we no longer have a Speaker of the House. So basically, no one is leading the legislative body of our government. The news in the evening continued to cover the war in Ukraine and the unprecedented weather patterns that are causing havoc across our nation. And then seven days ago, as Pastor Robinson already said, we were surprised to learn that another war front has opened up in our world. Hamas has attacked Israel, and Israel has responded. Pictures of women holding their babies with blood splattered on them. Young people being pulled away out of a music concert where they just went to celebrate their birthdays. And senior citizens being driven away by strangers from their homes and their families has filled our TV screens on every channel and become the topics of social media. So it is, a, it is at this time that as Christians, we must put aside our busyness and find great courage in the face of danger, especially in this battle to save and protect humanity. Y'all better show up with Bible study or that prayer service tomorrow, because we definitely need it. Amen. Amen. So therefore, the title I have selected for this sermon is The Mighty Women of Valor Unmuted. Mighty women of valor, unmuted. Let us pray. Most high God, we thank you that you have given us time once again to join together as a body of believers, seeking your wisdom and for your guidance. Now, Lord, dismiss me so that I can receive the word as these that you've designated for this space to receive the word. God, I turn this service over to you. Each and every one of the words are your words, O oh Heavenly Father. Let it touch where it needs to touch. May it lift where it needs to lift. And may it convict where it needs to convict. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Mighty women of valor, unmuted. There is not a circumstance in life today that is not addressed in the Bible. Amen? Amen. If you're struggling with pain, by Jesus' stripes you are healed. If you are confused, God is not the author of confusion. If you are in need, the word says God will provide. Every situation we experience today, the Bible has a matching remedy. But just like a doctor, if you don't consume the prescribed medication, the pain, the illness, the relief, the comfort will not come. All right. And just like you can't blame the doctor, you can't go around blaming God because you need to consume the medicine. You need to consume the word of God. Amen. For the situations I've already talked about and pastor already alluded to, we find wisdom and guidance in the story of Deborah. It's rich up in here. For times such as these, we must, we need to be women and men and people of valor. Valor is being defined as having great courage in the face of danger, especially in battle. Now let's be clear, we're in a battle. I may not have on my camel helmet or be carrying my M16, but we are in a battle. We're experiencing, Pastor, a human condition that should force all Christians to their knees. Not only must we have courage to bravely face the circumstances of our lives, but when we rise from these ashes of this struggle, we must become unmuted and be willing to speak boldly and with authority to the situation. Stop shushing me. <laughs> So let's look at the scripture and break this down, because I'm only the kicker. 
In Judges, we have the unique opportunity to observe a woman of valor, mm -hmm. a woman who was in motion. As a matter of fact, Deborah's name actually means orderly motion. What can we learn? There are three things I would like to highlight. First, Deborah was a prophet, one who was regarded as an inspired teacher and a proclaimer of the will of God. I learned in my study that the female prophets were not uncommon back then. And so that was an aha moment for me. Miriam, Moses' sister, is called a prophet. The prophet Hulda, in 2 Kings 22nd verse, was the wife of Shalom, in, is in the King uh, Josiah's inner circle. And then there was a woman named Nodiah in Nehemiah, is the head of a group of prophets. I'm doing okay fast. All right. <laughs> Who spoke against Nehemiah. So women were in the circle. All right. From her prophet role, however, we know that Deborah had a relationship with God. Yeah. You can't be no prophet if you don't know where you're profiting from. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> she had to be able to distinguish God's voice yeah. from her own wishes yeah. or persuasion. Yeah. Now you can go out here and talk a bunch of stuff, but if you're not linked to the actual tree branch, what are you talking about? Put yourself on mute. <laughs> she had to know how to make herself available for God's use. In today's world, we desperately need individuals willing to make themselves available for God's service. Individuals who, like Deborah, have taken a position under a palm tree which I equate to stepping away from the hustle and bustle to hear God. <laughs> too often, we're only hearing the voices of the news stations or social media. We're too busy watch, binge watching the next release on Netflix, and you know I'm telling the truth. Just say amen, don't even look up. <laughs> more faithfully attentive to Sunday, Monday, Thursday night football. Because I ain't going to tell you no lies when my husband is today. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> but to know God's will and to share God's will, we must spend time with whom? God. God. Second, Deborah was a married woman. And married Israelite women are normally identified by the name of their husband. Deborah is the wife of Lipidoth, which literally means torches. So the phrase <laughs> wife of Lipidoth can be translated as a fiery woman. Right? I was studying up in here. Now, I do believe that Deborah had a spark in her. In Revelations 3.16, we see that God does not favor those who are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. It says God will spit you out, spew you out, put you out of God's mouth. As we truly become, are we truly becoming lukewarm Christians? Now, I'm going to let that simmer for a minute. Are we truly becoming lukewarm Christians? Are we standing for anything anymore, or have we settled for everything? Are we willing to speak against sin and clean up the sin we have in our own secret closets? In my imagination, I see Deborah as being willing to stand for righteousness and to speak those words where, that God has put to the people under her leadership. Now, is this giving us a license to leave out of Quinn Chapel's doors and start knocking people upside the head? No, it's not. And for that, I refer you back to Deborah's name, orderly motion. And seeking God's guidance on your engagement strategy, we will dig into a, which we're gonna dig into that a little bit better. So you can't go out here and say, well, Reverend Perdita told me I can just go out here and tell you what I think of you and do it like, I didn't say that. Because number one, what I said, you got to get with God and understand what you're supposed to be talking about. And when you get with God, then God's going to give you the strategy to engage effectively. Amen. Third, and this was surprising to me, this fiery woman was a judge. Not just a judge who would be the one who delivered um, we would be the deliverer through whom God um, uh, would end Israel's oppression, but Deborah was actually rendering legal decisions. 
In verse 5, it says that Deborah held court. Now, that's major. That's a shout out right there because she finally was able to actually get into the courtroom, not only to be a, an attorney, but she was the judge. <laughs> Women, somebody need to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Women in this period were the property of their husbands. <clears throat> Without their covering, women were left to be destitute in society. So for men to abide by her legal decisions was unique. So don't take that part lightly. It's a quick thing you read in the scripture, but it says a whole lot about what Deborah and who Deborah really was, a woman of God. When you have risen to a position of authority, either officially or unofficially, we must be sure to speak, always speak with wisdom and common sense. Yeah. Ladies, let me just speak to you for a minute. Men, close your ears. Sometimes when we don't go out here and we talk like we don't know what we're talking about and allow all these emotions and anger and stuff, men, shut us down. Lower the octave in your voice. Talk with authority and like you've got good common sense. Don't get so caught up in the emotion. That ain't even in my scripture. I'm just telling you about the way it is. I'm just being real. When you, when, when, when it upsets me, and it's so disappointing to me sometimes, when I look at actors and actresses or social media icons who don't realize the influence they have in our society, it burns me up. They have been unmuted, and people are listening to them, Reverend Parker, to their conversations and observing their actions as Christians, you cross this threshold of our church doors, we have become unmuted to the society from the outside looking in. People are looking at you. People are hearing the praise that goes up in this church. And people are watching you. Are you acting one way in church and totally different at work? This is for me too. Remember, I'm sitting down right now. <laughs> Are we carrying a Bible on Sunday and a whip on Monday? <laughs> Are we dancing for God in the daylight and twerking like a champlain at midnight? <laughs> Come on now, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. And if any of these examples speak to you, then how can others look to us, the church, for wisdom and guidance from God? Now that's being a woman of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me move on for y'all kicking me out. <laughs> In verse four of chapter four, it's very, this is a very, very, very important verse because it is a backdrop to all that comes afterwards. The three highlighted facts about Deborah's person positions her for action in the remaining verses. In verse five, we find Deborah sitting where? Between Rama, uh huh, and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. When I read this initially, I breezed past that sentence. I said, okay, that's where she was sitting, cool. But when God had made, had me go back and look up the definitions of Rama and Bethel, well, a new revelation was revealed to me. Rama meaning it is the seat of idolatry. And Bethel means it's the Lord house. So Deborah stood in the gap. <laughs> she was standing in the gap of life and death. Amen. You all picked a mighty switch. Amen. God strategically positioned her. Did it matter where she served the Lord? Absolutely it did. Has God strategically placed you in a place? Does it matter where you stand? Yes, sir. Absolutely it does. Amen. There are no coincidences in life. Amen. You visited this church as a first time visitor for a reason. This was no coincidence. The word of God in Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. All right. The situation you are dealing with is not an accident. That's right. God, for whatever reason, and some things may not be revealed, be revealed to us until we get up there where he is, yeah. needs to be a part of your journey. Mm -hmm. And in this situation, just like Deborah, God has work for us to do. I took a moment to look at the history of Quinn Chapel, and I realized from reading your history that God strategically placed this church in this area so that it could be a part of the Underground Railroad. Amen. 
for a courageous individual who saw freedom. That's why you all up in here. <laughs> then you all had the nerve to get really bold and open up your basement so that this become a hospital yeah. for, for to help the wounded people that were fighting the battle that wasn't too far down the road. And that was such a major part of freeing, freeing the African Americans that we enjoy today. Amen. Strategically positioned. Yeah. Give yourself a hand, Quinn Chapter. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, moving on. After 20 years of oppression, the children of Israel called out for God's help. Now, I want to pull into a little rest stop here. Because my automatic car needs to be charged. 20 years? 20 years? The children of Israel were willing to endure the harsh hand of the Canaanites. When God gave this land to the Israelites, God instructed the people to take possession of the land and to destroy what? Everything. But instead of fully heeding the specific directions of God, folks started to make decisions on their own and pick and chose what they would keep and destroy. Now, like most women, because I always like to bring things home, like most women, I have been trying to regain my weight of yesterday. Oh. I got a witness in here. I refuse to get rid of these clothes because I know one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be able to fit in the air. So every diet or eating plan that I read, it tells me at the very beginning, the first thing I have got to do is to clean out my refrigerator and my pantry of unhealthy foods and candies. I got a witness? Ladies, I'm just being real. I need to rid myself of all temptations to cheat. But when I go in to clean up, I see those chips that I done paid $4 for. I see that gummy lifesaver that I love to have while I'm watching Judge Judy. And I just can't throw it away. So I leave them in place. Then I got the nerve to get on the scale six weeks later and see that I ain't made a bit of progress. Because I have not cleaned out my refrigerator and my pantry. Amen? Amen. You know where I am? Yes. When God tells you to clean out, we need to clean out thoroughly. Amen. It can't be a little bit. There is no negotiation. It's like being a little bit pregnant. I ain't never heard of being a little bit pregnant. Either you are or you aren't. Either you're going to eat healthy or you're not going to eat healthy. You've got to rid yourself of the temptation. But just like the chips and the candy sneak up on me, the gods, little g, and the customs of the Canaanites crept up on the Israelites, and they started living in a manner that was not of God. That's right. Oh, I'm just going to tip over here, and I'm going to go to the club just one more time before I destroy it. When we live in a manner that is not of God, our parting partners soon become our masters. And that is what happened with the Israelites. We started out as just having fun because it was fun. But soon they became the oppressors and they looked up and it was 20 years later. So don't sit up here thinking, oh, I would have never done that. No, I would have been out of that situation. No, you're not. Go look at your father. <laughs> What we learn from this scripture is that when you ask, God does provide. So finally, when they can't get in any more of their clothes, when they had partied it out, when those oppressors have taken the last dime that they had, they said, Lord, please come by here and help me. When they humbled themselves and prayed and sought God's face, turning from their wicked ways, See, I'm making this scripture work for you. I want it to be real for you. Sometimes we read this Bible, it's too hard to understand, but let me break it down for you. When you turn, when you humble yourself and say, I can't do this by myself. Lord, I need you. It ain't got to be fancy prayer. Turn from eating all that fat and food and say, Lord, help me. God will hear you from heaven. Forgive your sin as he spoke to 
took that word to call Barack. <laughs> Deborah, who was strategically positioned, poised to hear, let's go back to the beginning, and was a fiery woman, was obedient unto God and told Barak, which means flashing sword, who was from Kadesh, which means cleansing. See how God works this all out for you? That after 20 years of oppression, God was going to deliver Israel from Sisera, which means old man's old nature soul. That's what Sisera means. Come on now. Y'all ain't never gonna read the scripture again the same way you did before. <laughs> she tells him to go to Mount Tabor, which means fragile human life, sweet Jesus, taking 10,000 men from Naphtali and Zebulun. In verse seven, God says, I will pull out that old nature, Sisera, and deliver this victory to you. Amen. God set him up. Yeah. Now, don't you think that Barak must have looked at Deborah and said, excuse me, <laughs> let me get this straight. We've been doing this for 20 years, and now you telling me that I, I, not we, but I am going to have to go get 10,000 men with made up pitchforks, clubs, and other farm tools to go up against 900 chariots of iron. Devil. I, can, I know that's what Barack said. He may have said it in Hebrew, but I know that's what he said. He said, Deborah, you my girl. But we need to talk up in here. We've been in this situation a long time, and it's difficult to see our way out. If someone offered a prophetic word to you today that tomorrow you would be delivered from the situation you've been dealing with, you would say, okay, I hear you, but. We frequently allow the buts of this world to override the what ifs of God. I'll say that on again because y'all didn't get that blessing up in there. We often allow the buts of this world to override the what ifs of God. God says, I'm going to bless you with a new job. We say, but God, I'm not qualified. When God says, I'm going to bless you financially, you say, but God, I just lost my job. Instead of the but, we need to see the victory and trust that the Lord is going to come through with God's word. Am I hitting home, Pastor? For me, at least. Barack was in but world and says to the devil, well, I will go, but if you... But I will go, but if you won't go, then I'm not going. <laughs> Deborah, who was a woman of valor, who had courage, wisdom, and unmuted, said, okay. okay, all right, I'll go. But if I go, your decision will mean that you're not credited with the glory. Oh, no. right. Not only will you be credited with the victory, but God will deliver Sisera into the woman's hand. All right. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to you in 2023, but back then, it was a big deal because this man was going to have to be placed second fiddle to a woman. Uh-huh. And that would have been a big deal. So, but in this period, knowing this woman was going to be a best, was going to see a slap in his manhood. Man, I don't mean to be no harm, but that's the way that it was. So when we try to keep rearranging God's plan for us, we do suffer consequences. <laughs> While the victory may still be ours, it's not to the full extent that God may have it in store for us. Stop trying to alter God's plan for your life. <laughs> Perdita, throw all the junk food out. <laughs> no, God, I'll do it after Thanksgiving. <laughs> Well, then you won't fit in those clothes until 2025. <laughs> All right. Listen and follow God's instructions to the fullest. So moving forward, Barak follows Deborah's strategy and collects the men from the identified tribes. And there's a lot more in this verse. Again, I'm skipping, but remember, I'm only here for the kickoff. So I'm, only, I'm gonna move right on into the fourth quarter in this two minute warning, and I'm gonna make this my exit. 
In verse 14, Deborah says to Barak, up, for this is the day on which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. The Lord is indeed going out before you. At a designated time, God calls all the preparation work. Pastor, you already talked about it to come to action. I don't know what's happening over there in Israel with Hamas and the Gaza Strip. But I do believe that God is calling us to action. Amen. All the church programs, all the Women's Day, the Men's Day, the Young People's Day that you've been having, all the Bible studies that you've done been to, all the schools that you all been to, all the prayers that you all been to, it is now time to put all that stuff into action. You can't keep sitting on the sideline waiting for the moment because now is the time for action. And if you didn't get all your preparatory work in place, it's too bad. You're going to have to come out there just like you are because this is today. Tomorrow is not promised and yesterday is gone. In Matthew 25, we read the stories about the ten virgins waiting for the bridegroom to come back. I don't know about you, but I'm on my way to Walmart to get me some extra oil because the Lord may come back tomorrow. It may be on Wednesday, but I'm going to have my stuff on my side because guess what? Don't come looking at me about trying to get some of my oil because I've been told you on this day that you need to get to Walmart yourself. God ain't playing with us anymore. We have been giving a warning sign know why all this happened, but because we have the news and all that, you need to recognize, open up your Bible, turn off that television, and know that God has given you a warning sign. He said, I'm coming, I'm not going to tell you which day, but I'm coming, and I'm coming to redeem all those that know me in the pardoning of their sins. So if you don't know Jesus in the pardoning of the sin, somebody need to stand up and say, Lord, here I am, dirty, fat, Whatever, but I'm coming, Lord, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice in it. God ain't playing no more. And you can pass it off. As Pastor said, you may have your own feelings about Jewish people or whatever. But I know over in Psalms 122, it told me I need to be praying for Israel. I'm praying for Israel. All the way back down 70, I'll be praying for Israel. So you can take it lightly if you want and turn off the channel. But it's not stopping the fact that God is soon to return. We don't talk about this anymore, Pastor, in the church. We don't want to offend anybody. But that's doing you all a disservice because we need to talk about what time it is. Because you can't be out of here living life any old way. you got to come out of the Canaanite life. This is the day that the Lord has made. And this sermon, this, this theme was designed to wake you up. Mighty women of valor. We have been unmuted. Not for our own benefit, but for a dying world's benefit. How can you sit there and look at your children or look at those beside you and not even recognize that they're dying? God is not pleased by being a muted church. We've got to unmute ourselves and go out here and speak the truth. Giving people to know that on that Calvary, Jesus died for you and I. God is coming. And I'm just so glad that I got an early warning so I can make my way to Walmart and do what I can get my oil. Praise God. Have a glorious Women's Day season. Come on, put your hands together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Johnny, this little light of mine. All right, come on, let's sing this song. I'm going to ask the pastor to come, uh, Reverend Perdita, to come back and open the doors of the church up. Amen. Come on, sing this thing. Oh.
if you are questioning whether this is something for you, this is your time to excuse yourself from the rose and come down. The doors of God's church is open. Decision time is now. If you came in one way, you now have the opportunity to leave another way. Come, go. God is waiting here for you. This can be delivered and lifted up. Take your medicine. It's not hard to do. Come on down. This is your time. This is your way. If you are still wondering, if you done steps outside the boundaries, come on, rededicate. Be prepared to do whatever you need to do in the name of Jesus. set people free. You and I have been given the call, you know, man? So we, I want you to come even tomorrow. We need to come. We need to be on God's side. I said six to seven. Let's do six to, uh, I, you need at least two hours because some people it won't be able to come until eight o'clock because they are, I mean, a quarter of or something like that because you're going to be working. 7.30, getting up the highway. Uh, we won't be open until eight. Seven, uh, six, six to eight. And let's come and pray. We got those people's names in the book. Amen. On our list, these people going through all these who have lost loved ones, got job situation. We're going to throw all that in the bunch tomorrow. And, and she has encouraged us not just to, just to read it and know it. She said it's time to put it into action. She said something else was interesting in and, and, and Sister um, Deanna lifted it up because it's written in the bulletin. And it kind of shows you where God is. She was talking about, uh, you know, what you're going through. God has, has given you that privilege to go through some things. Why did he allow you to go through them? Listen what, what's in the bulletin. And, and I thought it was, I said, hey, boy, God, you really know how to throw something on a piece of paper. <laughs> God is up to something. There is a reason why you went through all of what you went through. Trust the process. He got you. Let me say that again. I, I kind of messed it up. God is up to something in your life, in our lives. Individually and collectively, he's up to something. 
There is a reason why he, why you went through the death of a loved one. There is a reason why you lost the job. There is a reason why you got the job. There is a reason why you were sick for a while so you have some sympathy on others who are going through. <laughs> through all you went through. It's a process with God. Vicki, I heard you say that when you was talking about those in your family. I said that when I went through my, my family. We had two people that died in the immediate family. Guess what has happened? People are talking to people in our family that haven't talked in a long time. Because in the, in the messages, I said, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck with people dying. You know why? God is still on our side. The process. He has a process. Amen? Amen. And guess what the process will end up with? He got you. Amen? Amen. So listen. If he got us, let, it, let us bring us tomorrow together. Six o'clock here in the center. And we're going to pray. Amen? Because yeah. we need prayer. We need prayer for ourselves and for this whole world as Reverend Parker has been talking to us about. And we need prayer that we can go through the process successfully. Reverend Perdita, I want to say to you, that was a challenge. Stand on your feet. <laughs> I'm tired, man. You're, you're younger than I am by, by two days. And um, yeah, we're so happy to have you here with us today. And um, uh, Sister Evelyn Robinson recommended uh, uh, you to us. And um, I really appreciate it because I had not heard you, but I would be willing to hear you again well, and again. Thank you. Thank you. A very, very, very powerful message to me. Yes. Uh, I like what you did with those uh, uh, places and looking up. The, the, you did homework. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sometimes we preachers don't do no homework. <laughs> yeah, you did homework. And, you know, it's an interesting thing. We were started in the book of um, Leviticus. And I said, well, I, I don't really want to teach this book because it's too boring. You know? Mm -hmm. But what I've learned is boring because I'm not relying on God to bring the life out of that book. <laughs> so we start bringing the life out of the book. And I can't wait to get back yeah. to see... We were just dealing with something like I'm saying this so they could hear it, so maybe they'll come. So maybe they'll come. It's a, it's a, a method to this madness. And, uh, and, and hopefully, as, as you said to us again, that what's happening in the world today, we need to be ready for it. And, and have our oil, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. They didn't think he was coming the first time. He came. He was born in a stable. They wasn't expecting no stable. They was expecting if he comes, he's going to be riding in a chariot or flying with angels. He came like one of us that he may set us free. So all of those of you who are listening to us today, we want to say to you, those who are listening virtually, we want to say to you today, I don't care what you're going through. God has a process for you. You've been through some things. You might be on a drugs. You might be addicted. You might have trials and tribulation. All we're saying to you today, God want to use whatever you've been through. If you let him, he'll set you free, and he'll set some people free around about you. You hear me? So God is saying that if you have, if you prayed and asked God to come into your heart, God will uh, bless you in a mighty way, but you need to find a house of God. You need to find a place to go to so that you can hear God and let God speak to you. And then there is a fellowship. Some people come to church every now and then. They don't understand the process. The process is that it's not only the preacher. It's not only one message. It's the process of people in that church ministering one to another and we're encouraging you to hook up with somebody hook up with a church that's preaching the word of God that will dare to tell you that these are the last days and that you need God and you need him right away get your oil while it's cheap hey you guys a word there after a while after a while there ain't gonna be no oil and you're gonna be trying to get in and that this is going to be the saddest words you will ever hear. Wow. I never knew you. Don't let that be said of you. I want to thank God and thank all of you for coming to the service today. I want to thank Reverend Parker uh, and her leadership.
and all the women who have, I mean, uh, this, this presiding lady here is, is my Lord, is, wasn't she good? Come on, put your hand here. I mean, she, I thought, she told me, she said, Pastor, I got a license. Yeah, but I wasn't talking about driving the car. I'm talking about a preacher now. But I think we're going to have to give her a preacher's license. Amen. And I want to thank, um, uh, 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 Vicki, you did a super job uh, on, on, the, on the scripture. Listen, I told him I wasn't going to touch that scripture. Because the first thing they said, God, that man, that preacher can't even say them words. But you did it so nicely. Those, those names and... And the way you say them, if they were right or wrong, I don't know. All I know, say I'm mighty good to me. <laughs> and uh, thank, uh, thank you, Sister uh, Atkins, for uh, uh, ending, uh, doing your introduction, the reading of the scripture, all that you have done today. We have been blessed to God. Would you stand to your feet one more time? If you can't stand, please stand, please stand, please stand. And Perdita's gonna, Perdita's gonna, Perdita. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> She's gonna close us out with a prayer and give us the benediction. Most gracious and high God, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, that we have been restored and refreshed and renewed. We thank you, O oh Lord, that the Holy Spirit visited and has sat beside us. Now, O oh Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, we will never leave you. We ask that you keep us and guide us, protect us and strengthen us, so that we may go and be unmuted in this world. O oh Heavenly Father, give us a good strategy to engage the children, so that all of us can come upstairs and be with the Father. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let the church say Amen.